Orcs, are you okay? I remember when life was simple, you were just the bad guy. You roved in armies or served as thugs to glorious bosses. Sometimes you went down hard just because some short, cobalt looking whack hit you in the head with a rock. Ah, the times when orcs, goblins, and ogres were all just vagaries for man-sized, monstrous humanoids. I want you to know, deep down from my heart, that from the beginning, I was rooting for you. I've watched your rise. Maybe I was even a small part of it. My game world had its first playable orcs in 1990. With your appearance as a character race in the 2024 Player's Handbook, it's time to reassess your role in my world building. But don't worry, I still have a soft spot for you, you sexy bastards. Hello fellow adventurers, welcome to the show. We do world building here on the WBEE and some 5e rules videos to go along with it. We get to do both today. If you didn't know, orcs are sort of a big deal in Dungeons and Dragons. I'd say they are just as important as the dragons in many worlds. I bet less than 5% of DMs don't use them in some capacity in most campaigns, even if they're relegated to minion ships or obstacles that give low-level PCs a hard time. I'm Lewis Nichols, by the way. I do nerd stuff, have for a while. Lately, this channel has been my outlet of creative mana, along with a year-old campaign that we've developed all the way up to 10th level. It's still going strong. I've written some stuff, made some maps, you know, the usual. Last week, I ran a couple of games for strangers at the Gods of the North gaming convention. There were playable orcs in the 2014 rules, but I wouldn't call them mainstream. Let me know in the comments if you had any direct experience with orc PCs out of the Monsters of the Multi-Universe or some other rules variation. The 2024 version is essentially these guys imported in. They both have Adrenaline Rush, where you can take a dash action as a bonus action. You can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. The only change is that now you get temporary hit points to go along with it. Dark Vision has gone up from 60 to 100 feet, so overall there are improvements. You also have Relentless Endurance, which means if you get knocked down to zero, but not outright killed, then you are actually at one hit point instead. If this ability bails you out, you can't do it again until after a long rest. They also used to have powerful build, which let them carry more stuff. But maybe D&D realized that nobody uses those rules anyway, and just left it out. All this really makes me think the devs knew as far back as 2021 that species would no longer have their own attribute bonuses. That's a good thing. It means that they're moving forward with a plan, not just coasting through the ethereal like a drunken camel. Hey, wait a minute. Are there camels in the ethereal? Eh, there are now. Let's put on our speculators and see into the future. My suspicion is that most DMs will keep their orcs as they are. When a player wants to bring one in, they might just write it off as, this is a more enlightened orc. If it fits into the game, they might get more orc storylines. It's a good way to handle it, especially in established worlds. No reason for a big rewrite. In my 5e setting, which is featured in some shorts and a few longer videos, I have orcs. They exist in a substantial numbers over millions of square miles of wasteland. They coexist with giants in some places, and others they rule themselves, but usually they serve some greater power. In one case, a pit fiend. I've pretty well stuck with the 5e monster manual orcs. I've given them a few extra spells here and there, when it fit the occasion, but I've never really committed to any kind of unique set of rules. As a world builder, I consider orcs' biggest advantage on a survival of the species scale to be the resilience of their bloodlines. They're prolific breeders and highly survivable, if not terribly long-lived. Compared to humans and most other Velito, they are generally more physical than mental, but there are smart and wise orcs around. And these guys are motivated. I mean, they live to attack in hordes and take out the occasional hero. A whole generation can be venerated. If just one famous old elf, maybe in some place in a castle, sunk back into a defensive area, you know, if they take him out, it's a win. That's right, I said it. Waterdeep was a win for the orcs. Fight me in the comments. 
One option with the rules change is a cultural awakening. Maybe a new orcish pantheon is born out of the children of Groomish. This could provide a wider inspirational base for the species. This dysfunctional bunch of god siblings could vary in alignment, motivation, and goals. The end effect is more diversity in orc culture. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing with them on my world. I'll need to figure it out pretty soon, though, because my party most likely will be deep into orcish lands by Christmas. If you're starting from scratch, you have two clear directions you can go. You can charge forward into a new age of orc equity, or continue to use them as a primarily evil race. You could absolutely use the various versions of Star Trek's Klingons as an example. Trek has pushed forward Klingon reform since the beginning. They've steadily worked toward maintaining their uniqueness, but shedding some of their bestiality at the same time. Kind of a mad butchers to noble warriors journey. You can go either way, or every way. Orcs don't have to be unified. You can bring in multiple centers of orc culture and vary them just like human cultures. You could fully integrate them in with humans along with halflings and what other Velito you like to work with. Remember, I'm never here to tell you how to do a thing. I'm just here to help you shake things up and possibly encourage new thinking. Your world will be great because of you, but I'm glad to help. That's it for now. Hmm, I feel an exercise coming on, but that's going to be for later. I'm glad you all stopped by. The station has grown a lot lately, but we still have bukus of work to do. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're feeling really ambitious, leave a comment and tell me everything that I've said wrong. Tell me about your plans involving the new orcs and the 2024 rule set in general. I'll see you all next time, adventurers. Have a great week. Cheers.